Hi everyone. Today we'll be looking at different ways of troubleshooting problems that might arise when performing a polymerase chain reaction or PCR test in the lab. So to start, what is a polymerase chain reaction, otherwise known as PCR? A PCR is an experimental technique used to copy small segments of DNA into millions to billions of copies of a specific segment of DNA. This can then be studied in further detail. In order to study isolated pieces of DNA, PCR amplification is essential. There are three steps to a PCR, which include denaturation, annealing, and extension. Denaturation is responsible for breaking up the two strands in the DNA double helix. This happens by heating up the mixture, which causes the hydrogen bonds between the DNA strands to break. During the annealing step, the temperature is decreased to allow the sample to be cooled enough so the primers can bind to each end of the template strand. Last, during the extension step, an enzyme known as DNA polymerase attaches to the primers, making a copy of each template strand. After this cycle, you have four strands of DNA. When you perform this cycle again, you'll have eight, then 16, then 32. So essentially, PCR doubles the amount of DNA in the sample after each cycle. This allows the production of millions of strands of DNA. Some clinical techniques in which PCR is useful include DNA fingerprinting, detection of bacteria or viruses, diagnosing genetic disorders, and paternity testing. In order to prepare a PCR, six reagents are needed. These include the DNA template, DNA polymerase, primers, deoxynucleoside triphosphate or DNTPs, magnesium, and a buffer solution. These are then mixed in centrifuge and PCR tubes and added to the thermocycler. However, during this process, there are common mistakes students make. Some of these include, but are not limited to, unexpected slash nonspecific bands, weak slash faint bands, missing slash no bands, and smeared bands. Of these four common mistakes, weak slash faint bands seem to be the most common. As depicted here, these bands are not very visible and therefore cannot be deemed significant when analyzing the results of the PCR. However, there are some ways this can be fixed slash troubleshooted. The first is extension time. The extension time of the PCR reaction might be too short, resulting in an insufficient amount of time to complete the replication of the target. This will lead to failure to produce any amplification products or might result in nonspecific short products. On the contrary, if extension time is too long, this can lead to smeared bands. If annealing time is too short, Primers do not have enough time to bind to template strands, also resulting in these nonspecific bands. The rule of thumb for extension time is using a time of one minute per kilobyte. When the temperature is below 68 degrees Celsius, a longer extension time is required. Next, for annealing time, the rule of thumb is to use a time of at least 30 seconds to ensure enough time is present for the primers to bind onto the template. Next, primer concentration also leads to weak slash faint bands. If the primer concentration is too high, this leads to primers binding nonspecifically to undesired sites on the template or to each other. And if primer concentration is too low, this can lead to insufficient annealing. In order to combat this, well-designed primers are at a concentration of 0.2 to 1. Also, it is important to make sure that correct concentrations were, are supplied by the manufacturer. Last, the number of PCR cycles can also lead to weak slash faint bands. Fewer cycles might not generate enough amplified product, while overcycling might result in smeared bands. It is important to set the cycle number to 25 to 35 cycles, depending on the quantity and complexity of the template DNA. Although weak slash faint bands seem to be the most common source of error, there is still the occurrence of unexpected slash nonspecific bands and smeared bands which might arise. This image depicts the difference between a nonspecific and specific band. As you can see, the nonspecific bands are those that do not correlate to, ex to the expected mutant. In order to troubleshoot this, make sure the PCR is free of contaminants and have an annealing time of at least 30 seconds. This image depicts the appearance of smear bands. As you can see, there is no def definite band present. In order to troubleshoot this, reduce the template or reduce the extension time to reduce the occurrence of smeared bands. We hope this video helped you with troubleshooting some of the problems you might have had while performing your PCR. Make sure you pause the video on the next two slides and answer the questions to test your learning. Thank you for watching. What are the two ways to prevent weak slash faint bands? 
reduce extension slash annealing time, primer concentration, and or PCR cycles. What are the six reagents needed to complete a PCR? DNA template, DNA polymerase, primers, DNTPs, magnesium, and a buffer solution.